How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Diamond Mountain channel. My name is Bill and Chris Bill on a jewel from London now living in Japan making instructional jewelry making videos. So here we go. First of all I want to say thank you to Judy Bailey and David Turner my two very first patrons. So those of you who watch my videos before will know that I recently just joined patrons because I want to I want to up this whole thing to a new level where I can actually make like real pieces of jewelry and then give you everything I know because I've only ever really worked on platinum and gold through my whole career but now I'm set up at home paying for metal myself um, just doing a lot of instructional guides but only working in silver and I'm, I mean I do get a few jobs from local people but when I'm making a video stopping and starting all the time and worrying about camera angles and stuff and what I've got to say does take my concentration away from doing the job so when I'm doing stuff for a customer I do really want to do as good a job as possible so any money I do receive from patrons is like sacred it will never be spent on anything other than this channel so it will go when I receive it I will it will go into a, a separate account right so that was the introduction today we're doing ovals um, someone requested uh, help to do an oval like ages ago like one of my first ever requests and I and I said yes I would do it but never got around to it and then anyway today we're doing it uh, a little bit reluctant I think I resisted doing it in the past it was, uh, wasn't a priority for me because I hate doing ovals I can do them I can I can get them finished fine but it's always a bit of a struggle for me it's always like like doing a round collet putting four claws on I just know what to do just cut them, zing them out, and I get them all lined up nicely. But ovals, I'm always like, oh, this bit, are they too far to the end? Are they too close? Like, oh, are they symmetrical? It's like, it's always a bit of a struggle for me because I haven't had enough, I found them difficult anyway, just naturally they are difficult for me. And I haven't had enough practice with them to really master the method to, to, get, to, um, to get a finished result exactly how I want it to be. I, I don't like doing ovals because, to be honest with myself, uh, I've been defeated a few times in the past and I struggled with them and so that's taken the fun out of doing it that I don't get job satisfaction so uh, I avoid them where possible but knowing that there's no growth in, dis in comfort um, you have to look what things you don't want to do you have to look things you're scared of past problems you've got to kind of forgive yourself and just move on and try, try, try things again because you never know you might have a lucky day and then do it really well and then with that positive attitude, you're very much more likely to do a good job next time you try one. Uh, got the setup at home now, so I've got no excuses. I can just literally write a list of things I don't like doing or I feel like I can't do good enough and then only do those. And uh, the chances are, with a bit of experience, you kind of master it and then it will be the most enjoyable, most satisfactory thing you can do. So you switched it just by leaning into discomfort it's where the hidden treasure is of acquiring new skills. Not just jewellery, anything. Anything you want to do. Just do the things you don't want to do or you've been avoiding. Um, that are most satisfying when you, when you finally master them and get them done. Like people I've worked with have always been really good naturally at doing oval shapes. And they've always found it kind of amusing that I, I hated it and couldn't do it that well. Uh, they just turn them up by hand and uh, they look really good. I would like to have an oval collet punch and then I can punch it out a little bit and then adjust it with pliers to get it the right shape for the stone I'm working to. Uh, but I haven't got an oval collet punch here so I'm doing the whole thing by hand. So that's the first thing I hate about ovals and the next is putting the claws on, positioning them, four claws I'm thinking of, uh, and positioning them, getting them all symmetrical and, and nice. It's always hard to choose where to start um, and then get them work along and get them all done nicely. I've got two bits of metal, this is going to be my claws and I'm going to mill this out a little bit just to get something worthwhile to turn up a little oval shape. Now I don't have an oval stone, I don't think so, I'll have a look for one, I may have one. It's always nice to work to a stone. Um, yeah, and I'll turn up an oval with this and then we'll put the claws on. My bit of wire, it's a twisted horrible bit of silver and it's a bit thinner than I would like to use but using that is better than pulling down more wire. Right. I've got to straighten this and a technique I saw on another YouTube video uh, which didn't really like the look of but I thought I'd try it. He just put it on a metal block and I had something else flat and metal and uh, he just did this. And uh, it, it kind of kind of works. 
but not not very well if you're a bit of a bodge artist that might do for your claws but for me it's not good enough ideally uh, one end might have been sharpened to pull for a draw plate that's the that ends kind of waste anyway so I would put it in my vise so say that's my vise yeah that's clamped in there bent towards you get some pliers your jaws vice jaws whatever they're called pulling down or any pliers with kind of teeth on you gotta hold it a decent amount so you've got a nice bit of grip on there and then yank it you can change hands um this is just a thin bit of silver i can get away with doing it here on the bench but yeah literally it just pull it and you'll feel it you'll feel it stretch and uh, if you did the measurements, it will literally measure slightly thinner as well. There you go. That has improved it. I think it would be better if I just did that first of all. Um, slight bend there where I did it, but that section to that section is quite nicely straight. So that's what I'm going to use. You can always, if you don't like the surface, just... Uh, Get, I've got my little pot of bits of paper here. Get a clean bit, not one I'm going to rust. What I do is I just fold it in half, just go around it. it. Pays to do this anyway sometimes when you're about to solder on bits of wire and that. Just get it all nice and clean. There you go. Et voila. That is not straight enough. <laughs> but with a longer bit of wire it's easier to get it straight and in the vise much easier as well the way i just did it then i don't really advise it but you can kind of get away with it with a small bit of silver i might put that on my metal block and just tap it gently as well this was a horrible bit of metal this was the bit of melt up metal i used for the how to make square wire video recently um, it was all melted up all the tiniest little dirty little bits from the bottom of my scrap box uh, but it's, I've got it this far all right there's no splits in it or anything but it just feels really hard and horrible but anyway so this is what I'm turning up for an oval been through my stone box can't find any large ovals at all I know I've got a large oval citrine somewhere but I can't find it um, anyway so for the first time ever I'm just going to turn up an oval this is just for practicing the shape anyway so not necessarily practice for getting it perfect for a specific stone but yeah I'm breaking my own rule a little bit in this video I'm not making something for a stone but forgive me for that i will try and get some uh i should get stones for all shapes all sizes and uh all shapes as well even cheap ones just so i can explain about making different style collets for the different shape stones in future videos but if you're interested this bit of metal is 1.4 by 1.6 call it and my wire is like one mil exactly bang this oval out real quick but yeah like i was saying i don't like doing ovals so what would be a good idea for me and maybe for you as well just get a long bit of wire and then make like five six at least in a row maybe ten would be good ten in a row and there'll be a very big difference between your speed and ability on the first one and the last one you do so what i'm gonna do is oh, this metal's rock hard right um <clears throat> that little bit of curve is going to be the side tight enough of it out. Wow, this sucks, like just turning up an oval. There's no skill in this at all. You've really got to work to a stone. And that's twisting. Straighten that out a bit. <clears throat> My bad. I'll get that. Right, these, um, these pliers are good where you've got one flat section of one sort of snipe round nose. These are very good for especially doing really tight curves. So I've kind of, I'm thinking I've started this oval from here. It's not starting from here. Just gonna, I just like that curve there. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm tweaking that out of line. Because that's going to hit that now. So I'm just giving it the 
the minimum amount of adju adjustment so I can wrap it round and get that end to go under there. And this bit of metal is looking horribly straight. So I'm looking at that now. I've got this bit, it's what the first curve I made up to there is all right. Then this bit is all sticking out here. So if I just bend it from there, it should close that up without changing that curvature. I'm just pull it from there. Looking at that now, that looks more rounded than the opposing side. So I'm gonna to have to straighten that out a little bit more. Done that. Now back to here, tighten it up again, just fold it up. Still a bit more rounded there. Okay, moving down a bit. Let's get this wrapped up a bit. What I don't like about the way I do it is I kind of, I'm not gonna say bodge my way along, but like I can never quite decide where to put the claw. Sometimes I put the first claw on and I think it's too close to the end. So then when I put the other one on, it's got to kind of match the other side. And I just feel like the claws are too much on the end rather than there. Very unforgiving ovals. And then you've got to match the other side. So just from your very first saw cut, like marking where the claw went, already starting to go wrong. Pulling it around a little bit. I don't know. It's just I want to be able to just do it really well. First attempt all the way through. I've got a kind of nice oval coming. Needs a bit of tweaking. Uh, let me get that a bit lined up nicely but yeah guys there's a lot more skill in making something to a stone like this was too easy just just whatever I like the look of so definitely get some if you're gonna practice this definitely you're gonna spend the time and effort practicing ovals you may as well actually have a stone and then you're also practicing the skill of lining something up and getting it a perfect size for a stone because that's a difficult thing to do well in the jewelry making business um, when you're making this, where you start from depends on what you're doing with it. Like if that's going to be a three stone ring with a stone either side, it might be an idea to have the solder join right there and then you've got your other stone soldered right up to it. So after all your claws are on and you're polishing it, you haven't got to worry about a little line showing up. your best to go straight through it you don't want to saw cut like that it just makes it a bit more awkward when you're if you've got to make adjustments to the size or anything if you're working to a, a diagonal solder join it makes it harder to make a small adjustment and then have it perfectly lined up for a good solder join after so that needs squeezing together a little bit it's got a bit of spring in it but that's how it's cut out um, it's not bad needs a lot of work. It's sharper that end than that end, so that end needs a squeeze or that end needs squashing flatter. Um, again, like there's no skill here because I'm not working to a stone, so it hasn't got to be anything perfect. So I'm just going to do what I like the look of. So this is my oval now. I um, soldered up with hard solder to save me having any issues when I'm putting the claws on with easy solder. And then I tapped it flat. Oh yeah, I filed the I filed the outside because uh, I had a bit of a lumpy solder join there. So that's it. Look at it both sides, put it down. I recommend really studying it. You've got to turn it around, left, right, top, bottom, whatever. Because you, you may find it looks good one way, but not the other way. So find out, find out why it doesn't look good one way and then make any adjustments. I think mine's more rounded rounded here so I need to get my half rounds in there no nope, they're not gonna fit might be one of those unfortunate size curves where 
Oh no, I can. I think I can adjust it a bit. There. Let's give it a bit of a squeeze. So I'm rotating it. I think I mentioned before, I do it because it protects me from myself because you, well, I, anyway, it feels like you're touching it like perfectly on it, but you are actually putting a bit more weight on the back or there or tilting it. So something delicate has got to have a sharp edge. It's quite unforgiving and it will show up when one is slightly lower than the other. So what I do is I just give it a little file, rotate it a bit, and you're filing it from all different angles then. Quite a lot of work to this. What's going on with this bit? Okay, that'll do. Oh, I just this feels really wrong to me not having a stone to put on it. Okay, this side does look flatter to me. You've got to be careful when you're trying to reduce a curve, like you can't just put something like that in and squeeze it because you're going to put two dents on the inside edge so you have to think a bit more carefully you may have to go from this side a little bit and then this side a little bit also just from the mechanics of your hand this one's being held still and this one's pulling up so only one really is moving to the other one they're not both even with even pressure going to the center a robot might do that, but your hand doesn't. Your hand basically only pulls one to the other one. So bear that in mind when you're tweaking it. Because like squeezing that, it's only really squeezing that side up to that side. Do you know what I mean? And you turn it round and you might balls it up. So just work carefully. <laughs> You'll be all right. But yeah, bear in mind your pliers. You're only actually moving one. Something to consider. Have you seen these before? These are, this one anyway, is specific for jewelry. It's very useful. It's got circles and diamond shapes and squares and little cutouts for shanks. Uh, it's for designers basically, but I use, they're only, these are meant for drawing, but I use them as a guide for actually things I've made. So there's a little row of oval holes here. Even though the shape is different, you can still use it as a guide because the gaps either side should be nice as well. You can put it over one where the hole is on the inside, sort of check it again that way. But yeah, useful. Also here, I have actually used this before. Put that under, gives you a bit of a head start to put where to put the claws. But it's so difficult to line it up. Literally, because those lines are not that thin. So using that to really try and line it up perfectly. And then there's an element of holding it in position and then getting a pen to draw dots on. Those dots don't really fill the gap perfectly as well. Doesn't do a very good job. Like if that hole was really small, just a little pin prick, just enough to get that nib through, it would be better because it's quite big and then the pen doesn't go up to the edge. It does tend to, you can spend time lining it up really perfectly, but the dots you put on there aren't really of any use because they look crap. So maybe it's good for checking when you've got claws on there, see if you can get those claws through those holes and see how they fit nicely. But like I say, it's for drawing. It's not really for actually making things, but it is useful. I do, I have used it plenty of times in the past. I was saying those templates are useful. They're useful for checking what you've made and not actually useful as a guide for making stuff. They're a bit, I don't know, they don't really work. You're better off just learning to do it and then holding in your hand and with your hand and eye coordination and be able to do it, make them accurately and then just test it with that and tweak it if you want. Right, anyway, so there's my nice side. There's my bit rougher side. I've just left it filed. Edges are a bit meh, so that's why it looks probably worse than it really is. But anyway, so that's going to be the back. That's going to be the top. Ready to put some claws on. This is what I need to practice.